not, I'm not knocking. I'm not going to start knocking a film festival. But w- the more to the point is, is it's this is a film festival that's not like on the main radar. But I, it's great that that they really are being careful about what they program here. So even if they know that maybe they're still small and growing, that uh, the Lighthouse International Film Festival, but that they they have a mission and a particular taste that they're trying to achieve, you know, and and it's it's about the quality of the films, and that's great. So that way, when they do grow into something that may be more, yeah. um, you never know. Yeah, that and you never know. Yeah, those film festivals are like you know just um, mm-hmm. growing, and you know, like South by Southwest, that used to be like a s- <laughs> small venue. It was a it was a music festival. Yeah, I know. Now, if film is fact, it, it became this big thing, and now it's actually not that it's now it's the smallest silos oh, or whatever. Is it? You want. Well, uh, yeah, because uh, tech grew as the biggest thing now like they're interactive whatever they're calling it mm-hmm. so that that component of that festival is now like the biggest crowd and it, it you know how they have it's a two-week thing right so they have the film the first week and music the second there's a little overlap i think maybe it's not quite two weeks but then but the the tech thing is the entire festival i think oh. pretty, unless i'm mistaken i'm pretty sure and then they brought in now comedy is big you know a lot of comedy stuff and so it's like it, it's a big festival. It's big. It is big. Yeah. Do you have anything remotely like that in Israel? I mean, you're here in, and you're in L.A., right? Yeah. Aren't you? I'm in, I'm in L.A. Yeah, yeah, for a while, uh, right? Yeah. For a while. Yeah. Guy Nativ. You go by Guy? Yeah. Okay, not yeah. Guy, not the French version. No, you know, French, um, the French call, him, call him <laughs> Guy. I, 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 don't, I don't mind. Right, but you go by Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Mom calls you guy. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Very good. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you too, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I. I guess I've, I. I'm certain I've seen uh, some of your shorts. I mean, or rather, excuse me, a couple of your features in the past. Skin is is makes how many features? Um, it's my it's my fourth feature. Oh, okay. So okay. So and I did th- three features in Israel before. Right. Right. No. No. Yeah. I understand. And then uh, three shorts. And I'm gonna guess four shorts or four shorts. Uh, is one not uh, been made into? Oh, yeah, all one four. Is, one is uh, one is not made into. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And then I, it sounds like, and I would do want to touch on it later after we finish, that the new f- film, based on your grandmother's story, yeah. Harmonia. Yeah, Harmonia. That's the name of it, or is that that's the name of the call and the name of the movie. Yeah, uh, is is not going to be a short unless you figure it out. No, it's not going to be a short. Yeah. I mean, there you did this little documentary. Kind of documentary. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, remember yeah. that. You, we're, I know some of these things ahead of time because I sat in on on the, your uh, master class, I guess they call it, uh, yesterday, which was really terrific, and I learned quite a bit. I know I learned a lot of it. I was re- thinking I'm learning quite a bit. <laughs> now I can't remember what it was, but probably things will come up in this. Um, right. And what, one of the interesting things are is uh, three of your shorts were became feature films. I'm w- trying to word this correctly. You can correct. That's me. true. But yeah. but they weren't always exactly expansions. Sometimes they were variations or inspired. Right. By like skin, which is what we're going to talk about. Was a short. In fact, it won the Oscar, as, you, as we know, which was a, a, a slightly different version, a, a story, right? It's a, a completely an opposite um, story as the feature. I mean, it's the same subject matter, but it's um, um, basically uh, about a, say, a racist man who learns what racism on his own skin. And the feature is about a, a skinhead white supremacist who uh, take all his hate from his heart, soul, and skin um, to become a better person. A monster who wants to be a human being again. Um, so it's kind of an opposite things, but you know, it's 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 the same subject matter in a, in a more general way of speaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the short, the primary character. In that one, because the posters I saw was showed a child. No, right, the, right, the, the two children are. There's two are children. Okay. Two from two different families, but they're not the protagonists. I mean, of the. I understand. Uh, the protagonist is the father who is um, racist and teach his kid um, to shoot, to use guns, and to hate in mm-hmm. a way because mm-hmm. he sees his father, um, and it kind of a backfire on him. 
Okay. Oh, the, the short, by the way, just so I'm going to mention this now since we, we talked about it, is available to see for streaming right off of Fox Searchlight's website. Correct. So, um, and, 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 the Heather, and excuse me, Danielle McDonald, who's in the feature and people yeah. know from Patty Cakes and yeah. from uh, Dumpling, and she was in the short as well, right? She's yes. the mother? She's the mother in the short and the mother in the feature. So that was wise of you. Did you meet her through, uh, uh, um, or did you first come aware of her through? She's my neighbor. Um, oh. I babysit her dogs, and she babysit my dog um, uh, even before she did patty cakes. Is that right? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So I I met her before she, you know, and then patty cakes came out and said, oh, oh, my God, you're actually a very talented actress. And, Turns out, um, right? You didn't know that. And then I said how natural it is for us to, you know, I want do to do something sh- together, and and then when she she was she was a name, yes. in a way yes, she was yes, kind sure. of a, um, when I did skin. I mean, my producer said she's she's big of enough name to to cast in the feature. That's that's terrific. Was that Oren or is it another producer? Oren maybe more and Maven um, Pictures, who are mm-hmm. uh, Trudy Styler and Celine Retre, who are terrific, um, kick ass ladies. Mm-hmm. Um, who decided to that this story is worth telling, and they brought the money. Mm-hmm. They brought the budget for this movie. Well, I think I mentioned to you, Oren has been on this podcast a couple of times. It's so funny. Yeah, such a small world. Yeah, he's terrific. Uh, yeah, he's no, amazing. he's 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 a great and he's a great guest. He's great on the show. Um, I'm really, I can't wait to have it another opportunity to bring him on. He's he's my champion. I mean, he's really um, shepherded me, um, and you know, he's my mentor from the script, um, kind of a level to the end to the editing, uh, and even now he's going to produce my next movie with his production company. So, you know, he's he was my big brother mm-hmm. and still is, and I'm, and I'm indebted to him. Mm-hmm. Was it your intention to, since you had made three, well, more than three films, you made a bunch of films in Israel, was it your intention to, uh, to raise the stakes and that's why you, you transplanted yourself to Los Angeles so you could become an international filmmaker or a you know just a more mainstream get more people to see your film actually no I I, I met my wife uh, uh, my answer. girlfriend back then uh-huh. um, in Israel uh, nine years ago and you know we mm. kind of like met the last day that she was in Israel she took she took the ride with her suitcase back to the airport and we said that we're going to have like one meeting in a coffee shop and she didn't take this flight and we started this long distance relationship uh, LA Tel Aviv which is at night and always day. recommended <laughs> <laughs> and right with the time to, to, uh, that sounds like a real nightmare actually um, you know what it was very romantic it was pre um, those dating apps and stuff mm. And we made those videos to one another oh, uh, every day. She woke up, she got my day. And when I woke up, I had her day. We did kind of like a video. Um, yeah. Hey, it's me. Right, yeah. That's how we survived um, four and a half years of long distance relationship. Four and a half years. Until, I got my, until we got married and I got my oh, visa. Uh, citizenship. Citizenship. Or visa, whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, citizenship, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. And now you have a a daughter, yes, who you video chat with yes. or video yeah. send videos to. So, so that's, that's a, why there's your next film after to hell with the one with your grandmother. I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> that that's why I moved to LA because my wife um, is an actress and she uh, was living f- twelve years in LA and it was yeah. my natural move, you know. And and yes, I wanted to do international films because when you make films in Hebrew, there's a very limited audience for that, and right. you know Americans don't want to really see um, foreign films. Unfortunately. Yeah, no, I I, I, yeah. I have to agree with you, and um, yeah. it's I, not a it's thing. True. I'm in that bubble in New York City where we get a lot of them, but it doesn't represent yeah. a fraction. No. Of, you know. uh, I mean, well, you don't get a, a lot of them; you get some of them. Well, right? uh, yeah, and some of them are usually among the best. Yeah, so that's good. I mean, not all the best, but mm-hmm. enough. And then you know, then we do have this online. W- internet thing that helps a little bit yeah, too in that true. regard uh, yeah. I, uh, so and the nice thing about LA of course is you are pretty close to a desert so it's not if you're ever yeah. feeling homesick and the beach 
And the beach, right. Right. of course. Yeah. What am I thinking? Actually, the, some of the L.A. landscape is pretty close to Israeli yeah. landscape, right? Because yeah. you have the, the... Okay, enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Skin, man. I saw it at the Montclair Film Festival. Where in the last screening, or I don't know. Oh. I was you were there. there. You okay. were yes. You you were you came in in the Q and A, and I said I kind of slipped out because skin for those listening is a it, it, well. You can already probably pick up on some clues from what we've t- talked about. We're going to get more into it. Is a re- relatively intense story. It's a very intense story. I'm going to say it in all the best of ways. But it's an intense story, and you know, afterwards I feel I don't feel the compulsion to. To sit in a Q&A. I need to, you know, to kind of process. Digest it. Digest it, exactly. Let it marinate. And unfortunately, Q&As are well over by that point. So, know. you know. know. In fact, I don't like to go into another film. Um, and, and when you're at a festival, that's not an uncommon, you know, re- almost like a requisite is that you have to go from one film to another in some right. festivals. Right. Uh, not the case at Lighthouse, necessarily. So... Fortunately, I didn't have to do that. So it's nice that a couple of few weeks later, I can have this with you now. Yeah. It's After a you digested it. But, yeah, it's, I you know, I, I, I tend to agree with you. I, I, I love films. I don't, I don't love going to cinema to enjoy and for escapism. For me, cinema is Either. about suffering a little bit. Me too. It's, you like you to articulated <laughs> it. I've never articulated it like that. And. And I, I'm really grateful that you did. You know, I'm, I think we're we're probably not representative of the uh, um, of the typical moviegoer uh, who goes for escape. Yeah, I mean the typical the you mean the mainstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you, that's a whole other conversation about who's catering to whom right. when it comes to escapism, right. and it has its place. But I agree. I I, I go uh, to be rip, ripped apart. Me too. Yeah. And and if I can get a good cry or just mm. you know or even angry sometimes yeah i'm i'm grateful you know yeah i'm, I'm grateful for I mean, it look at look at cold war and roma and 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 uh i don't know if you saw this film border this year no i have not i've seen the other two fantastic that it's such a you know dive into the dark spaces that I love so much. And who, who directed that one? It's a Swedish movie, so I forgot the name of the director, but it's such a brilliant director. Oh, my God. Right. It's so unique. Um, you got to see that. Yeah. Well, the, you know, and the Scandinavians are very good at dark, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Did you see the shoplifters? Yeah, that's on my top of my list, and I have a copy, to, and I now have a projector at home, so I can okay, watch good. it so you should, properly. It's another yeah, but I've movie. seen all of his movies. Um, wow. I'm a fan of his movies. I like his his stories quite. Still Life, and there's a yeah, Still Life. Yeah. Still, yeah. It's all about family. 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 Oh, oh yeah. That's, that's I actually started it. Then I realized, oh wait, I can't just start it and not see the whole thing through. And the beginning scenes were, you know, well, there's, there's, it's given away in the title. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, uh, it's slow, yeah. but it seeps in. Mm-hmm. It's oh yeah. Great. And that's a, another wonderful thing about cinema. You have the the pain and the suffering that we go through watching these very very difficult films, and then and by difficult I mean positive definition of difficult. And then we have those slow ones. It's interesting. I was uh, talking to somebody the other day about the Russian filmmaker Tarkovsky about like Solaris or whatever films, and somebody just said it, it's boring. Uh, you, but then he, he they they, extrap- they they expanded on that what they were talking about. They go. Sometimes when you go into it and you know it's going to be long and the scenes are these long shots, really long shots, abusively long <laughs> shots of, you know, that, te- that he does like a 10, 15 minute thing. And the story is very slow and the characters are sitting there looking miserable. But there's so much more going on. And if you, if you just turn yourself over to it, you know, you allow yourself to go through this experience. Yeah. By the end of it, you are so nourished. True. By that film, those films. Uh, so it's like, and then you walk out a different person. Truthfully, you know? yeah, that's what happened to me in Leviathan. Oh yeah, and it was yes, so good. Yeah, and his last one too, and um, yeah, I mean, it's just a, a Russian films are today are so. And uh, did you see the Tribe? I don't know that I see. Uh, maybe about not about those. Um, it's, it's it's a Ukrainian movie. That okay, was, it's was just yep. outstanding. Okay, so. well I'm, I'll make note. The skin played in. Has it played in international film festivals? Yeah, it did. Uh, it opened TIFF. Okay, and then it went to place. Berlin. Do you get to see the movies there? Do you yeah, other yeah, movies? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you are. Movies. Okay, that's yeah, good. I'm, 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 I'm squeezing the my my badge. That's good. Pretty, yeah, I, you got to do that. Well, you got it, but a lot of people they find they can't. But maybe that's I stay not... for a week and a half uh, to see okay. movies. 
you're even here you're staying for the, f- the full f- it seems yeah. like you're staying yeah. for the full festival i mean you're li- uh, although you're leaving today leaving today, today. Yeah, but you were pl- today. supposed to st- you were yeah. going to your plan was at least to stay yeah. for yeah, yeah, yeah. to see so it yeah it's a uh, film festivals are a great mm-hmm. opportunity to see especially foreign movies yeah um less of the american movies that you will see in the cinema that's right yeah mm. and so. then yeah I agree with that. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm going to make a movie just so I can travel to <laughs> those international festivals. But if you travel too much, you can't write. And you need to write. Mm-hmm. You need to, yeah. you know, it's, it takes a lot of that's right. uh, energy and, and stuff like that. So you Absolutely. need to pick and choose. So it was a TIFF, Berlin, and then Tribeca. Uh, and then you saw it at the... Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. I, 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 was, I, went, I actually went to Tribeca this year, but I ended up... No, I saw that it was playing at Montclair, mm-hmm. and so I chose to okay, see it in this, even though it probably was a smaller screen, but yeah. at the same time, you know, I made my choice. I, want, I want to say a lot of filmmakers that come onto this show have complained about the fact that because a big part, especially, I'm talking about American independent filmmakers mostly, that their experience is that after they made their film, they have to really spend the year, uh, in a lot of cases, not all cases, with the film on the road. They and, don't have to. I mean, you know that. They 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 can, choose to they choose to, and that's uh, sometimes a mistake because you do want to work on your next script immediately because you know that the film's coming out and you have like a year a year and a half that you'll have this attention. So <clears throat> so uh, I learned uh, being in a lot of film festivals with my shorts, my previous features, that if you spend a year traveling, it's great, and you see a lot of countries and you meet a lot of cool people. But you don't work, and it's 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 a problem. Although if you can ride on a plane, I mean, I I can't do that. I mean, I need my. So it's it's hard um, to travel with a film all the time. I think you need to let the film go, do its thing, mm-hmm. go to the major film festivals and to the festivals that you feel that are you know easy. You know, to go to Singapore right now for a week, it's it's a toll. It's like a, you know, it's like. A, it's not easy. So uh, as much as I want to be in Tokyo and I want to be in Edinburgh, my film is playing in Edinburgh, I, I just cannot be there right now. That's great advice. It's great advice. I mean, I just write. Just sit and write. Good. good. That's, mm-hmm. that's what we need to... The other... Uh, one last thing about I want to ask and then uh, about your prior films and, work and being a, uh, an Israel-based filmmaker, and that is the festival experience. There is a lot of... You could almost consider the festival circuit, especially the, the Jewish and Israeli film festivals, which are every city has at least one or two. You can just get the audiences you're looking for doing that circuit. But again, it's a lot of travel. That's, That's okay. So the Jewish film festival is another universe. You know, right. After the big, major international film festivals, you have another year that you can travel. Yes. in the Jewish uh, Israeli film festivals and that's mm-hmm. also it's uh, uh, a journey and that you it's 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 really um, you know tempting to go there because they obviously you see a lot of places and but I, I, I wouldn't recommend it because of, of people that really want to work and, and continue yeah, the, right. the creation very interesting to talk to you so frankly I appreciate your being so open but you still want to take advantage of that circuit for a lot of uh, filmmakers, especially of your size, until skin, let's say, the short when you won an Oscar. But that you, it's a cash. There's, uh, I'm going to rephrase it. It's a, <laughs> I was going to say it's a cash. It's a cash kosher cow. No, but it's a, it's a, uh, it is a rewarding experience financially because a lot of those those festivals actually pay. Fees to filmmakers, yeah, but but not to the filmmakers, to the producers, the not producers. To the, yeah, so they so pay for the for the screening of the film, right? Not to the, not to the. If you want to do, but, so it goes to to paying the financiers back. Yes, so what you mean? Okay, mm-hmm. if you want to do um, kind of lectures around the uh, Jewish community, that's cool. I mean, Honorariums, that's fine. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I did that a couple of times, um, but when you go there, you don't get paid. I see. So, right. I, I'm, I'm not saying. Look, I, I've been as a as a uh, as a beginner. As when I started doing films, I I saw the world. I I had no, but now that I have a daughter, mm-hmm. and I need to, and I know that I, eventually, uh, the the first questions you're getting is what's your next project. 
What's next? What do you have? What do you have for us? Mm -hmm. you, um, you need to balance your time with traveling. And, 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 I, and I understood that I've, I've been there. There's some ice falling. <laughs> it's fine. Do you, do you we're, we're at the Lighthouse International. Yes, it's okay, though. Hey, we're at the Lighthouse International Film Festival. I think it's... Uh, do you think that's the ice machine? Like it's just or another... Uh, what? Like, yeah, it's the ice machine, I think. Or it's... That's all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's, right. it's not working for me necessarily. Yeah. Do you... Okay, because here in America, often the filmmaker is also producer. So I, I you know, what I mean, were were you um, those? Did you write those first three films? Yeah, I, and oh. I, I wrote them and okay. I produced them. Oh, yeah, like, um, but it's producer made. as well. But it, you know, it's going to the financier. Right, right. No, obviously, as it probably is here too, because yeah, yeah it makes complete sense. So it's hard to avoid doing so. So you sent the film to a number of Jewish festivals, but you didn't go necessarily mm, to all of them. Not yet. I think okay. that uh, not this one. I mean, you know, you're oh, the, maybe the let's say previous ones. Yeah, yeah. It went. It's, yeah, you, you, yeah. Do, you do a year of Jewish film festivals and, yeah. and Israeli film festivals. Yeah. Thanks. This is great. Skin started as a short. Uh, was this based on Brian Widener? Yes. Okay. Who is was a former? Who is a former skinhead? And um, I mean, when you say skinhead, you know that skinheads um, is a very please. Um, Skin had started in England as, yes. as a punk group that made music. It mm -hmm. wasn't racist at all. I mean, so the racist uh, fascist movement in the 80s and 90s, they took this term uh, from England and they turned it into kind of like a gang in a way. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the re origin of, of, of skinheads are not racist. So. It's interesting, they, right? They took the fashion, the look, the, right? The, the, yeah. the skinhead is self explanatory, but the Doc Martens, the, yes. the style, the, the and then it evolved over um, the tattoos, or whatever. Yeah. So, okay, let's call them neo Nazis or fascists. Fascists. Yeah. yeah, that's a good term, especially today to get right to it. Do, was the short based on Brian? As well? it was no, no. The short okay. was uh, done only to make the feature happen. Okay, it was and you, but it, you didn't it could not have known how how successful the short. Oh, no, I, it, on, it, it didn't itself. get into Cannes. It didn't get into Berlin. Oh. Um, to uh, in Sundance, to mm. places that I've been with my features and shorts, and I was like uh, beside myself. So oh yeah, you were worried. Uh, I was worried, and disappointed. Yeah. Uh, the, the, but but because uh, the subject matter. No, I think I, again. I think that um, short competitions in film festivals are dedicated to first timers. I, it's are dedicated for um, uh, you know young filmmakers, and rightly so, by the way. Yes, and, right. Um, it's their break. It's their way in. Exactly. What else are they it making was my shorts break for? In. Yes, exactly. right. So I, I, I mean, b and then being this director who's, who's done features, who um, you know came as it, it wasn't their. Um, I wasn't a first timer, and I think that is a is a big decision that they make. Right. So uh, right, and uh, so many of the, uh, many of the the short short film filmmakers directors are making their film because this is their way to figure out navigate the how to do be, their find their voice and make their film and make mistakes and figure out the world that they're entering into. So they make a short. It makes a lot of sense. So it it does make sense what you're saying. The question would be, well, why are you making short after short? You have a unique thing where you do make these shorts, and then you're also almost like more internally figuring out your story, and then you use that as a template in a sense, uh, right, you know, to make your feature. Well, a lot of people ask me why I'm doing shorts, uh, including my producers, saying, why are you doing the short? <laughs> you, let's do the feature, and that's it. I mean, yeah. why are you... Um, it's, you know, between features, you have at least year two in the good case mm -hmm. um, four in the normal case mm -hmm. uh, scenario I think that every filmmaker should um, you know it's like riding a bicycle I think it's a muscle that you need to uh, stretch mm -hmm. and I love before I dive into the marathon to go and do the um, those mm -hmm. first of all I love shorts telling a story in 20 minutes is I think it's great you know I think it's a medium that's just getting better with all the you know um internet and everything that is so like you know your cell phones uh, you can see uh, shorts and mm -hmm. stuff but I, I I love this way of telling a story that if you can crack it in 20 minutes you probably could crack it in an hour and a half mm -hmm. so it's kind of like a DNA that allows me to understand what I want to tell and the cinematic approach of what I'm doing mm -hmm. so um, yeah I love shorts that how that's how I started my my 
creative life, a creative, um, you know, uh, filmmaking, and um, I I want to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? they've been marginalized largely, but maybe things are changing too. Uh, Shorts, of, yeah. Oh, but in, in, you mean in, in this general? They, well, you know, you can't go just to. I mean, it, it, they're generally harder to to figure out how to see in all. Yes, historically speaking. Yes, yes, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, but you, whatever. Uh, they serve a great yeah. purpose, and 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 things are changing because the internet. Let's, uh, yeah. But you you cast in the short an actor was it to, as, as your lead the, Jonathan Tucker Jonathan Tucker yeah. and you were explaining and maybe you can't tell this anecdote about when you got finally you were able to make the feature version that he couldn't you wanted him originally yeah I was upset because you know in Israel yeah. when you when you want an actor to be in your film and you, you have no it's no it's not an issue you know, right you don't have to bring a bankable actor i don't think there's a term like that but uh, it's right in the this States. is an american phenomenon exactly right. yeah um and and i was bummed because he was so amazing in the short and i couldn't bring him i couldn't bring him to uh, the feature and you know he's such an amazing actor and um i it was it was a weird situation to be in to tell an actor who was so great in the short and gave everything and look at whiplash and the success of the short yes yeah you and know. look at whiplash what were you yeah. gonna say the whiplash guy um the drummer from mm -hmm. the short mm -hmm. did not go oh. to be the drummer in the feature because of the same reason right i'm sure there are many examples maybe not so high profile you know but yeah you're yeah. right yeah. and so he, jonathan was understandably disappointed yeah, he was disappointed, but look, he has so much um, great body of work mm -hmm. behind him, and, and he's doing the city, of, city on the Hill right now, which is a, a very uh, serious in uh, Boston, mm -hmm. based on um, the um, Ben Affleck film, The Town, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he's going to do great, and I'm sure yeah. I'm going to work with him uh, in the future. Well, that's the other part of it, you know, is, is to keep your head on your shoulder. It's hard for actors. Or so, you know, the rejection can sometimes be... Especially if he obviously had a personal, he felt he this was his. Yeah, it's understandable, you know. You you then figured something out. You learned a lesson from that experience of having to reject him after the fact. And and what did you learn from that experience I, as I, a as a filmmaker and somebody who's casting people? And I think that you know when you have relationship with all and not it's not only him by the way. It's all the cast in the in the short that. Mm -hmm. A lot of them cannot continue with you to the feature, and from different reasons. Because you know, we we made the feature in New York, and it was kind of upstate New York, so you need to take a New York actors because it's like tax rebate sure. and the whole thing. And the, it's some sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it's not up to you, right? So I think that I um, next time I need to do the the talk, you know, and yeah. tell my right. my cast and crew, listen, this is this is um, we're doing this, mm -hmm. but I cannot guarantee. That everyone is like gonna be in the in the um, right. in the feature, so right. it's understandably so. But I I think that I didn't know back then that this is a scenario. I didn't know how hard it is to have all your team like right. overlap right. the um, the feature. Yeah. So at the very least, you have a an out. <laughs> You're not guilty of something. Yeah. On the very best, you've, you've you've not set them up for disappointment, which is yeah, you know, exactly. Which is great. I mean, yeah, a lot of them knew that. I mean, yeah. as an actor, you know, yes, that you know how it goes in the U.S. You know how, you know, um, mm -hmm. things are. Mm -hmm. You know, the name of the game. You know. So. Yeah. Right. That's true. And you know, we celebrated the the short uh, the win in the Oscar, and we did a beautiful. Uh, dinner at our place with all the cast and crew, and it mm -hmm. was just amazing to see people who who are so grateful to be in a, such a small movie that they didn't even think that will yeah get their recognition. And so it's we we stayed a small family, all of us. So there's no mm -hmm. hard feelings. Oh, that's good to hear. And Danielle McDonald, we already mentioned, she's one of the few that did transition from the short to the feature. She plays again yeah. the mother yeah. of. Uh, and the sort of the female yeah. lead, and I'm going to say, if I could have her in every um, feature I make, I would I would do that because she's not only a good friend and a, an amazing human being and good dog sitter. Yes, <laughs> she's <laughs> also a brilliant actress. Yeah, and and she's and she's done my podcast, so I have a especially. And you should have when, her again. I would love to. I and I would not hesitate. Uh, the, the, uh, she when um, when Patty Cakes. 
was coming out. Um, they, you know, for, for whatever reason, I think I already had established a connection with Jasper, the, 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 yeah, the, the director, the director, yeah. right? Is this his first name or his last name? I'm, I'm, I'm blanking a little bit, but anyway, I had established it. So when it, I guess it all just played out Jeremy well. Jeremy Jasper. Said, Jeremy Jasper. Thank you. Yes, that's right. That's right. I, I, I asked him. Um, I, I saw, or they asked me, I guess the distributor said, who do you, who, or the publicist, who do you want from the, I said, well, uh, anybody I can get, I think it was great. I, I love the whole, I love that ensemble cast. And so I, 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 I asked for Kathy Moriarty, who do you oh remember? Oh my God, played Daniel Raging McDonald. Bull. Raging Bull. I know, yeah. exactly. You know, it's, uh, it's, I had to have her. And she came, so they arrived at this place where I recorded the, stu- the re- uh, J- uh, Jeremy, Danielle. And Kathy, do you know, I didn't ask for Bridget Everett, who plays the mother. Oh, she's great. Oh my God, she was terrific, and and I'm only bringing it up because literally like three nights ago, I was I was in this in Manhattan at this uh, bar at this where there was an event going on where I was helping, and in walks Bridget Everett, and she shot a pilot with my ex-wife uh, recently. She shot a show, so she's friendly with my. So I went up to her after a little while. I said, "Just so you know, uh, you, you shot a, a show. I was really surprised it didn't get picked up. It was on Amazon or whatever." Uh, and she goes, what, what, who's your, who's, who's, and I told, so we were talking and, um, so I forgot to bring up the, this whole thing with, uh, patty cakes, but, so um, funny. I'm going to, now I have a connection. Maybe I can have her come on and yeah. she's so talented. Bridget Everett, you know, oh my God, she's yeah. funny, very funny woman. She is. Yeah. Uh, all that aside, Danielle was great. And in your film, she's, it's quite a, it's also, it shows a mature, more mature actor. Uh, somebody really who was given a lot of responsibility dramatically right. and rose to the occasion. I mean, um, I haven't seen Dumpling yet, although I'm going, I made a note to I watch haven't seen it too. Her, that Netflix yeah. feature, but, mm-hmm. um, different, different. It's a more, it's a comedy, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this is, might be, even though I guess you could argue Patty Cakes was a, a dramatic, it was, you know, it was yeah, a bit of a feel good movie too. It was yeah. the Rocky type of structure, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, yeah. but this one totally. is this skin is there's there's it's all drama. <laughs> there's no comedy. It's drama, for yeah. You know, I, I think mean, that yes, the movies that I'm inspired me yeah. uh, are we mentioned it, you know, yeah, are like if you see um, the uh, La Haine, mm-hmm. I saw it. Saw yeah, it? I saw that when it came. I was saw that at the New York Film Festival when it was there that year uh yeah i saw that was Phenomenal. the first yeah it's so good Ma- matthew uh matthew kasovich kasovich and then uh the prophet yeah of course i love that though so we're on the same page you know that's yeah. that's what i'm yeah. into yeah obviously skin is a very it, it on one level feels like an american indie because of most of the cast but it's uh it is not it is it's a bigger than that description uh, but the main actor is jamie bell so we mentioned you know jonathan couldn't did not get that role but the the studio or you're you were getting pressure from producers to get a big name right a bigger name and and, and i have to be frank he, i think jamie bell i've been aware of him since billy elliott and i think he's a really a huge talent and lovely to look at on the screen he's really great but i wouldn't have thought of him for this role me too, me too. I mean, you know, we went to the usual suspects before we went to him, but um, Orrin Movement was the one who came up with the, with his name. He said, mm-hmm. I, 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 you know, I had a dinner or a drink with Jamie um, the other night and I saw a man, I mm-hmm. didn't see a boy. Um, and you got to meet him. You got to just go. And and I said, what a brilliant idea. I didn't even think about it because it's like breaking the cliche of the... The um, tough. Um, Isn't he small though? I mean, you you get this. He is. Um, he's shorter than me, mm-hmm. which is yeah. I mean, look. Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate. He's obviously rose. He, he also transformed for the role. He is uh, the same height as Brian Weiner. The same exact height. He uh, put on thirty pounds for this role. Um, and yes, yeah, so I met him, and I and I saw what Oren told me I'm going to see, and I he's very intelligent and has a dark side that he connected to, um, for the role, and he was more than amazing uh, to work with. He was just amazing. Some of his uh, contemporaries yes. have had opportunities for really meaty roles yes. where they're really demanded yeah. to to to. Yeah come through and and deliver something really special and have gotten these tom as hardy. A, tom hardy being a great example of somebody who you know whether uh it was in um the call, phone call what was the one 
Tom Hardy, uh, where he's in the car the whole time. It's, it's, I think it's his. In the car? He's in the car. He's just yeah. on the phone the whole time. Should I walk? Was it? Yeah, walk. Lock. 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 Yeah. yeah, that, that, I mean, anyway. But he's had obviously several, including uh, um, also, uh, what was the other one that comes to mind? Um, well, we're not going to come up with titles, unfortunately. We're getting a slow. He did Bronson. Bronson, he? that's the one I was thinking. Bronson about. was what I wanted to, for Jamie Bell yeah. to have. His Bronson. Yeah, yeah his that's Bronson. terrific. But he, and what was his? The Chopper. Was, the Chopper. Is he the Chopper? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love those films. Uh, yeah. You and I have the same taste. Yeah, it's we clear. Have the same taste. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, then I loved all those. Um, yeah, I go and I look for those really dark early roles where, you know, especially the English films and... and uh, Romper Stomper. Romper Stomper. Romper Stomper, sure. You know, I, I, you mentioned like the how the, the skinheads from England, I was immediately remembering Gary Oldman or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tim yeah. Tim Roth. What's, the, what's and, the name? Um... Uh, yeah, here we go. Let's not go down this rabbit hole. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna, we're, we need more coffee. <laughs> we're going to meet at a coffee shop. We should have because uh, yeah. we at least have some fuel sharp. for our brains. Yeah. But um, it's okay. I want to talk about your film anyway more. And so, so Jamie, you, you offered him this role, uh, potentially of a lifetime, as cliche as that is. And did he jump for it? Did he? He, you know, Jamie um, was kind of uh, afraid to go this route. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, he thought that it's... Um, he thought it was risky for him because uh, it's a, such a villainous, cretinous monster. Yeah, and yeah, and also how would he uh, pull become it off this? Believably, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could see that. Uh, but he said that's a good thing that I'm afraid because I want to be afraid. I want to feel something uh, when I take such a role. Uh, he said, "Let me think about it. Mm-hmm. Let me think about it." And I think that when he saw that I'm uh, that Danielle is in, um, then he th- saw that this piece is gonna be real and raw. Mm-hmm. And I think it gave him the you know we all met Danielle, mm-hmm. me and him in a coffee shop, and uh, I told them what I want to have and what I want to do. It took him a while to digest it. And his agent told me, um, look, Jamie is, is, you know, he's taking his measures and, you know, he's like, you know, very, um, you know, he needs to think and to, uh, he's a slow burner in a way. Yes. Um, but when he says yes, you'll get him 100%. 100%. Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's what happened. When he said yes, he dove into the process like yeah. no one else. But he made you sweat a little bit because you were close bit. to production, were you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to start date. Yeah. Look, I understood yeah. the process. Right. I, l- I, I let him boil a little bit. But this was your first, uh, uh, was this your first? American feature. Yeah, so yeah. it was your first time dealing with that whole l- l- t- level to the process of yes. making a film, right? Because yes. you, you only worked, in, you not only, you you had only worked in, no, in, only in, worked Israel. in Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it um, was was the first time for me to deal with yeah. the American system of handing. I, you know, when I went into this film, I didn't do my due process, so which is, in a way, I'm glad because I didn't know much about the film when I went. I just had heard a buzz about it, so I said, oh, I'm going to go to Skin. It fit into this, my schedule, this, that, 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 that. And uh, so I wasn't 100% even of the cast. I didn't even, and I usually know these things, but I just, it was a, it was a kind of a wild card for me oh, to go into true. Skin. So I literally went in, and I knew it was a Tribeca, so I said, okay, let me, you know, uh, I went in, and I didn't know the cast, and um, it took me about 15 minutes, is that Jamie, no, it's not Jamie Bell, this is some American actor, just kind of slightly looks like him, you know, I could, I had to check, I had to, ch- oh, I waited, like, till the, I literally, to the end, didn't, wasn't hundred that speaks a lot of, of volumes about about his that's that's a nice thing yeah yeah that's a cool a it, cool thing that yeah. is not a, a recognizable jamie bell um he i think after this movie which is being distributed by a24 comes out and a lot of people will see it there will be a different impression of jamie bell and yeah so For it's sure, mission accomplished know. and he will Thank have you had so much man i appreciate Bronson, it you know I'll, I'll i'll tell him what you said well let me tell him you tell him. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can <laughs> maybe help make that happen yeah. <laughs> if you can the, the thing what happens is there's so many you know uh, outlets that sometimes I, I I was what I was complaining about was like I do I've had amazing people on my show but just as many people that I want to get on aren't available to me 
because of the size of my outlet, and I, mean, I do this. You, I'm doing this independently. You interviewed one of my heroes, I one did. of the brilliant directors, Orrin Hooverman. <laughs> Who else? Orrin Hooverman, but yeah. Mike Lee too. Mike Lee, my one of my mine God. too. That uh, was something I had waited years to do. I've actually interviewed. Where'd him. you meet him in England? No, no, I, I, he came over for for. So he was in New York, and I had actually had an uh, the film before, which was. Uh, not Vera Drake. It was no, there was uh, Vera some, Drake. Which one? Vera Drake. No, it wasn't Vera Drake. There was one since Vera Drake. I think, at least one movie since Vera Drake. Anyway, his last feature before uh, this 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 new one. Um, I was I I was offered to, but I I could not fit in one of the screenings, and it was a Sony's Pictures Classics, and they don't share links. They don't make except they weren't and now they do occasionally but they, at the time i had to go to a physical screening which i respect but i couldn't i just couldn't make it work because i have a young Not kid no but uh well like another reason to look it up it, maybe it was vera drake the point is it doesn't even matter it's just that you met it, the guy i was supposed no no i had met him before on mm-hmm. uh happy go lucky and one other another year Oh, wow. I had met him what twice before, and I talked to him twice before, and that's a whole other story, which I do go into in that episode. But he was kind of not grouchy, but suffering no fools, Mike Lee. You know, like as a as a interviewee, so he just did not he didn't have patience for silly, for, you know, whatever. It's not his favorite part of the process, perhaps. So um, this time, though, I was ready, like I was prepared, and I, I you know, I had lots to talk to him about and he arrived i was at the hotel his first one to meet him and we were in this big room and he walked in and he was in such a good mood oh yeah he was nice yeah he was uh kibitzing with uh do you know that word he was kibitzing with what's uh, kibitzing <laughs> what's that it's a yiddish <laughs> <laughs> yes it is you so he so, said <laughs> he was he was just in a very up-tempo mood it was early spring he was in New York. He just came in from a very successful screening in L.A. He was in, just in a great... And I, I got lucky. The person that was supposed to be after me wasn't coming. They canceled. Oh, my gosh. You had double time. I had double time. Wow. So I had That's... 40 minutes with Mike Lee, which wow. was... It was a gift. It was it's a gift. A and and I, I went to... I would tell him, I said, you know, when I was a young guy, am I still probably in my 20s, and I was walking around the village, and there was a movie poster on the outside of the theater for a movie called Life is Sweet. And I said, no, that looks kind of interesting. And I was into, in, I liked British films and I liked independent films even back then. And I said, I'm going to ch- go and check it out, you know? And uh, my life changed. I'm, I'll just say it. It was one of the two or three, four films, probably more than that, but the, where I came out, I, I had to go back. I went and saw it again. What took friends to see it. Same thing with Naked. So, I just, you know, but, but Life is Sweet was like an introduction to somebody who I didn't know existed. And I was so grateful to... For me, it was Secret and Lies. That film changed my life. Wow. Yeah. With the improv, when she meets her in the street for the first time. Mm. Uh, um, she said, darling, <laughs> you probably have a mistake. I'm not, not, not no, I'm, I'm your daughter. Yeah. I said, I and then she, 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 she gets oh it, God, and then she scene. understands. Yeah, and she she's seen this one shot. Yes, right. In the shop, in the, s- in the coffee in shop. In the coffee shop. Yeah. And, <sighs> he, she, and she said, you, you, you must have had, you had, an affair with he somebody and she well, she goes no impossible. she it's she blocked that, it out yeah. completely and you could see that she wasn't lying at first she thought she she couldn't she she knew yeah. she hadn't and right. then something right. she had she remembered it at, at uh, something she had blocked out completely what and insane. then she realizes it it's incredible I, it's I, a, I showed it to my students a lot of, a lot of time that's one of them that's, and they, you know they didn't meet you didn't, yeah. you didn't, they didn't meet before this scene oh I didn't know no I didn't know that no. they met for the first time this scene yeah yeah
Next time I bring on Mike Lee, I'll, I'll, I'll have to. We, we'll call in. You'll call in. Okay, guy call will in. call you. Oh my god. But yeah, this was like the yeah. dream, like the third time of talking to him, and it was the first time for the podcast. Uh, but so it was just wow. the greatest thing. So wow. I could spend an hour talking about Mike yeah. Lee, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, there were a lot of my heroes, and um, and I got Gus Van Sant this last year. Oh who, wow! And who, oh. you know, drugs or cowboy and a few other, uh, uh, you know, milk, which, milk, beautiful it's elephant, a, huh? Elephant, elephant, difficult, but right uh, on Alan Parker, right? Adapted from an Alan Parker elephant. Elephant. Uh, was well, there was another film called Elephant. Directed by this British filmmaker, Alan Park. I think it's not Alan Parker. It was no, Alan like, Parker. No, that's another British did filmmaker. The, the Commitments. That's right. Uh, no, this was a... Um, you know, people are going to like get annoyed at me because I'm, I should know my, my stuff. But this is a British filmmaker, experimental filmmaker. And, uh, and he made a film called Elephant. And it was this... This is way before Columbine and, oh, these, okay. and these high school... You know, or these school you know, shootings. But it was about a guy who they follow him, and it's mostly silent. And he goes into a f- a, some office building or some some workspace, and he he just randomly uh, shoots people. Oh wow! And it's called Elephant, and it's like so. It's not the it's Elephant of Gus Van Sant. It's not the same. No, elephant. this was before that. So oh, wow. he used that as his template uh, wow. uh, for to I make, know that because you know they're tracking shots or yeah, yeah, following yeah. the kids following for an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just uh, I'll, we'll look that up too. We have a lot of homework. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like this. But yeah, me too. Yeah. And you mentioned another favorite short of mine at the your th- talk yesterday, which was Last Andrea Arnold's. Yeah. Oh, what a film! Yeah. I mean, yeah. The 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 talent oozing from this short, the freshness and of fish tank is a fish tank. Of that. Oh, yeah. Wow, and and Red Road. Her first film. Oh yeah, I th- I know I saw it, but I don't remember so the good. details. But but she did she did my show. She did or, or very early on, I guess. I wasn't quite as I think uh, not experienced or you know. But I was I I really enjoyed her, and I enjoyed Fish Tank tremendously. So I think I pulled it off. But uh, you you be the judge if you want to listen to the Andrew. Yeah, Arnold I will. Say. I will go back. <laughs> There's and a lot to, to it. hear. And I have a to our. Uh, oh right. Drive back to New York. <laughs> oh yeah. wow. Okay. Well, I'd be tickled. It's that might not be. That's probably not on the iTunes or any of those things. Oh, it's not. It's on the web. It's pretty sure it's. I left it on the website, so okay. you can still find so. it. But it's, it might not be so easy for your drive. But listen to the Mike Lee anyway. I mean, that's, I will. <laughs> I will. Um, so we we just have Jamie Bell and Danielle McDonald. But I, I got to talk about some of the uh, supporting character ca- cast rather because there's some. You, you your cast is outstanding. Uh, uh, some of my favorite actors. I mean, I've had Vera Farmiga Vera Farmiga on as well uh, with a small film she was involved with with Christopher Plummer. Uh, but Bill Camp is 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 one of the great you know sup, I guess character actors I don't know he actors let's you know, just say you know Oren told me that uh, Mike Nichols told him that Bill Camp is one of the best actors in our time for Mike Nichols yeah Mike Nichols um, and Oren were friends he actually were they had like those um you know, kind of um, meetings and talks, and, and he told him about, about Bill Kemp because before Bill Kemp was known uh, for the night off and the whole thing. Right. That he, and he told him, and he was right, he is one of the best actors He can do in be- the world. pretty much everything, right? I mean, he can do everything. He can do no wrong. And I, and, and yes. I want... I just yeah, If I he, can cast him in every film I'm doing. Well, I, you probably could. I mean, I imagine he's like one of those actors that, you know... Like directors always have one or two actors that they 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 always try to cast in their films because they just you know have such a loyalty and a profound uh, respect for them. And Bill Camp should be that had that relationship with at least one director, if not several, because he's so good. And I just saw some, but uh, it was this you know it's a small suspense thriller about, called The Maid's Room by this director Michael Walker. It was good because Bill Camp was the lead in it. Oh, he was the lead. Yeah, he played like the father of a a kid who gets into. Uh, it's it's it's. Not, I I should not waste it, uh, the, too much of our time talking about other people's films, but it's a. Um, I'll send you the link because Bill Camp is is in okay, most the, most every the, moment of the film, and, and yeah, I'll send you that. I'm sure the filmmaker would be pleased in this case. Called the Maid's Room. The Maid's Room. Okay, but th- I, I mentioned him also because I, I don't know if we can get him on. But that's oh, you I'd should. Like. He, you definitely can. I mean, he's a New Yorker. He is, I mean, he's right? In, he's got to be. In your hood. Okay. I mean, you could 
definitely right. talk to him. Okay, I mean, good. When the like movie, if, when even the, if I can get to somebody who's like, wor- you know, representing him or say I could, I could probably. Uh, yeah, I could, yeah. Okay. Look, but when the movie comes out, yeah, we can all do. Okay. Right, um, but you know, you don't always get Bill or somebody like that because they're they, they're working on some other project. He's my, he might work. Whereas yeah. Jamie, obviously, yeah. part of his agreement is that yes. he's going to support the film afterwards. Whereas some of the minor actors, it's a big ask for them because yeah. yes, if they're in New York, they'll show up at yeah. whatever Q and A's. But yeah. um, and then you uh, even Louisa Krauss, who doesn't have a huge part in it, but she is. Uh, I think she's a, a very big talent. I, I I I've reached out also to her people and it hasn't happened yet but I've, I met her once and I, I, I ambushed her I said you I do this podcast you have to come on I'm such a fan of yours she is amazing she is she, I saw her in King, and, uh, King Kong King Kelly oh King Kelly yeah 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 yeah. She's talk about a different role come on it's yeah. just, uh, no but I saw her in Marcy May Marlene oh, yeah. yeah and I saw her in Bluebird which was a great film I've seen uh, it by the bus driver who forgets a kid in the bus in a, in a small town. Okay. And, like, and everything was snow. It won Carlo Vivari Best Film. Um, no Is she the mother? No, oh. she's one of the characters in the movie. She's so great, and she did this TV show, um, uh, Soderbergh, I think, uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but the uh, call girls. Um, oh yes, the girlfriend experience. The girlfriend. That's right. She was so good. She is yeah. whatever she does is so. And I and I want to work with her on, on, in Harmonia so as well. So. Oh really? Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that film just because you brought it up. <laughs> Sorry to jump all over the place. Yeah, we're jumping like <laughs> crazy we are. Here. I know. <laughs> it's like two so we were, maybe we should ADD just finish. People. Let's put a put a pin in it just for for we'll we'll get to Harmonia at the end. It makes sense because that's your next project, and I don't know how much you want to divulge about it. But I just want to say skin, Jamie Bell. Here's the synopsis of 45 minutes into what should have been a 20-minute conversation. But uh, this is wonderful. Talking movies, right? We could just do that. I can talk movies with you for an hour, an hour. And yeah. Least, and well, least. you could be my permanent co-host. <laughs> <laughs> we just That's talk cool. movies. Yeah. I'm no talk longer cool. interviewing talk guests. Talk movies with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jamie Bell, as you mentioned, it's a redemption story. Redemption story. He's a uh, monster. Eventually, yeah. Yeah, right. Eventually. Right. Well, yeah. I kind of see it. There's a there's a process to it. But it's yeah, true, yeah. but you see the glimmer even at, relatively early on that yeah. he's ambivalent yeah. about what he's doing. But it, it took his relationship with this strong woman played by Danielle McDonald to 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 push him over the uh, the edge about that and to you know own it and yeah. uh, make his tough yeah. choices. And Michael Terror, who plays uh, Daryl Mon Jenkins, who is the African American activist that helped him. Oh right, get out. I, I, that's right. I, and uh, that's yes, yeah. right. I, what's the actor's name? Mike Colter. Mike Colter? Yeah. Uh-huh. He did this um, um, kind of a superhero uh, show in Netflix. Oh, um, yeah. My my ex-wife was on that show, too. Oh. Uh, she an actress? Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, she's okay. in the new Apple What's show. What's her name? Karen Pittman. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you about her. She's she's Yeah, she was on that uh, Luke Cage. Yeah. yeah. L- Luke, Luke Cage. Cage. Yeah. Luke Cage. She was a regular on that. Uh, like a recurring character. Amazing. Most of the episodes, yeah, for yeah. the first two seasons. I guess it only ran two seasons. So, so Michael's led, on. He so he must know her. They must know each other. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. In fact, I was saying, she sh- the same, my ex, she shot a pilot with Bridget Everett, who played uh, Danielle's mother in Patty Cakes. Oh, they shot okay. a pilot together. That's uh, so kind funny. of ran over that so pretty such quickly. Such a small wall. I'm sure yeah. she knows my wife, too, Jamie Ray Newman, and she, they probably cross roads if, she, if she's an actress for a long time. It's going. It's, it's becoming a long time, and she's now on this <clears throat> first Apple series with Jennifer Annis. Her oh. career is about to really explode, wow. so, which is nice. I'm glad for her. She's worked very hard for it, sure. and you don't hear these success stories often enough, you yeah. know. But So you have a real... And then um, uh, that's enough of the the... The you know he's he's part of this uh, fraction uh, family c- slash cult. I mean it, it's sort of a cult approach when you look at the, uh, more it is. It is. more you get that message more through Vera Farmiga who plays Bill Camp's wife who's like the who calls herself mom. What what kind of better example of brainwashing? Right, you you approach totally. those kids yeah. that you are off the side or you know who are living who are homeless or. All practically homeless who've runaways off the side of the highway right hanging out with skateboarding whatever it is and you target them and you give them a new mom and family and food and f- well which is the first thing i should have said yeah. you're right of course yeah. they're starving yeah you give them sense of belonging um and they don't feel 
outsiders anymore because you, they accept them as they are and they give them new identity and pride of, of you know, it's almost like they teach them the new um, Bible, which is hate. You know, it's... That's right. And that's, that's how they, they lure them in um, as kids. Brian started uh, with the gangs at the age of 10, so, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, Brian Weidman again, who this... this uh, Widener. 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 Excuse me. J Brian... Brian Widener. Widener, right, yeah. who's, who's, who's Jamie's um, character is based on. Um, and uh, she's, she's, she's kind of, I think, probably more dangerous than Bill Camp, who's like the, you know, the leader. Right, he's he's the law. Whatever he says is the law. Yeah. Uh, of this group of 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 uh, this family. Yeah. Yeah. And she's the seducer. She's the seducer. Very the right. seducer. That's right. She comes Bill on as the, the mother, but she also comes on in other ways. So, and Danielle, McC you know, her character, of course, threatens immediately threatens her, and that's the because they're two moms. Right. So Danielle's kind of like a mother. Who's, who's going to be three? Three girls. Three kids. Three yeah. girls. Right. It's a it's an exceptional series of exceptional performances in a great film. It's called Skin. It's 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 being distributed by a great distributor, A twenty four, and it's coming out June twenty sixth yeah. in theaters in New York and Los Angeles. Yes, and, and or wide. I no not wide. Okay, it's limited, but it's uh, I think it's gonna be in also Atlanta or mm -hmm. Chicago or I think somewhere you know around those places. Mm -hmm. they, we're gonna start with forty five cinemas and. Uh, extended. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be in the direct TV uh, two weeks later. Oh, okay. So, right, so um, it's going to be playing simultaneously. I recommend people see it. It's a all too. Um, I think it'll be. I mean, w another thing that keeps coming up is that you know, there, I think a lot of people, especially us living in those cities that it's going to be playing in, are a little bit are going to be. Well, this is fiction. There's not these groups don't really. I mean, how many people can there be in the you said actually people would be surprised by just how many uh I mean, how can you be surprised like how can you be surprised now after all the massacres and of everything that happens in america and charlottesville how can you be surprised when you think of neo-nazi skinheads and what they can do um i don't think I, uh, you can live in a bubble and not even know about what happened in charlottesville but i think that's you know it's you can see these <laughs> groups mm -hmm. everywhere, and if you Google um, hate groups USA 2019, you will be shocked to see how many yeah. they are everywhere. Do you so, think the deplatforming yeah. that's going on and the crackdown on, on uh, let's say, like, for instance, YouTube, I believe, just removed tens of thousands, I may be exaggerating slightly, but I don't think so, of videos that are promoting hate groups or hate speech and they've removed them from their platform. Do you think that's a, a good thing, that, that kind of censorship? It is I, censorship, whether it's positive it is, or negative. It is. I think from one hand, it's um, not giving them voice is a good thing. But from the other hand, uh, it doesn't delete. It doesn't right. put away those groups at all. No. It just make them like bubble from there. And that's what happened when Trump, before Trump got elected, they were hidden. Mm -hmm. But they were there. That's right. At least now we know about them. Yeah. At least now we know who's maybe they, who. Right. And maybe Trump is a result of our complacency thinking, you know, in it the post-racist America as, right? Yeah. Well, that what, yeah. if you're a neo-Nazi and you're hearing it's post-racist, that's a good reason to sort of gather your forces to get and show that that's and, not necessarily the case. And, the, and the, the thing is that the last movie that dealt with neo-Nazi skinheads is America History X, which is like in the 90s. Yeah, twenty five. Since the nineties, nineteen twenty ninety five, whatever. Yeah, roughly. Um, probably. And then since then, nobody thought nobody thought that Nazis exist anymore. Yeah, I don't even think they thought that then. I think they probably thought it was a oh, still a, a, a mar you know yeah. like just a small like a village movie. It's like a almost like a yeah, a kind of a hinder, hidden um, sect or something. Yeah, like that. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, like any like any cult yeah. or something like that. That it's a small group of people that are yeah. yeah. Well, that's not the case. Um, it's obviously not in America, yeah. 2019, and in the world. By the way, uh, there's a lot of neo Nazis in Germany, mm -hmm. um, Austria, Austria, Austria yeah. uh, Greece, mm -hmm. Hungary, 
France. Right. France. A lot of, well, and neo fascist or fascist. Yeah, uh, fascist. Anti immigrant. Russia. The anti immigrant. Yeah. Is right. I mean, we know that uh, that it's as large a movement as ever. Correct. It's scary. On that positive note, yeah. but uh, your next film is quite different. But it, it, it can you talk a little bit about it? <coughs> I, well, it's, I mean, it's, I know it's different and not different because it is about cults. That's true. Yeah. The, the, yes, you're right. You're right. There is a so. connection there in that regard. Because but this is the better kind of cult. <laughs> no, this is a uh, actually about Holocaust. Well, it wasn't a Holocaust denial, but the the members were. My grandmother ma- was a Holocaust survivor, and at the age of f- fifty five, she had those post traumatic um, stress like, disorder, stress disorder, and, yeah. and nightmares of the Holocaust. And she was she want she was she was depressed, and she wanted to kill herself. And the family didn't know what to do until she met uh, mm-hmm. through another friend. Mm-hmm. My grandmother met this woman who was kind of a she had PTSD your grandmother and she yes. met this woman right around she, that time she met she met this woman named Lord at um uh and this woman where, told, where was uh, this? in Jerusalem okay and this woman told her um I'm gonna make you happy she was uh 10 years younger than her and you know she was a belly dancer and gorgeous imagine Sophia Loren when charisma she was 30. Uh, the, uh, the yin yang yeah charisma sexy seducer whatever and she used you know whatever we, people are doing today it's mainstream like uh, healing schmealing uh, fasting um, the whole knowing yourself better mm-hmm. thing and it w- nobody knew in the 80s what it means but my grandmother became happy happier mm-hmm. uh, than what she was and my family thought it, oh great that's a that's an amazing thing but what we didn't know is that this woman was a cult leader um, with uh, 37 women around her in Jerusalem. How many? In, in 37 women oh in a compound. In Jerusalem? Yeah, in Jerusalem. And uh, she ran a cult that name, named Harmonia, you know, based on her talking to God and yes. she's the channel, right. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And my grandmother uh, really fell in love with her, and she moves to her compound. She left my grandfather. She left the family, and she became um, her right hand. And when you know, peop- families started asking questions, and the police was involved, and blah blah blah, uh, she felt the danger, and she took all these women to Virginia, to a place called Yogaville, or next to Yogaville, which is like four hours away from Charlottesville. Uh-huh. It's in the middle of the woods. No man's It's always land. in the woods. It's always well, in the woods. Well, it makes sense that you're isolated. Exactly. Yeah. And she bought this compound, this uh, plantation, with the money that she stole from her um, devotees. And So uh, your, your grandmother transferred all of her funds, all her other savings. money from Germany. All the reparation money from oh, Germany. What a terrible, yeah, terrible irony there. I know, right? And... Um, they sh- they sold were all up. these thirty seven from most of them from like were they mostly Holocaust survivors? No, my grandmother was okay. the only one. Oh, she was the only one. Yeah, but that's why she 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 had a special kind of a you know clout. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so she so she was there, and the story tells uh, the the movie tells the story of my mother and my aunt driving to Virginia five years later to save their mom. And bring her wow. back home. Yeah, and it's basically a movie about what is happiness. What are you willing to do in order to be happy? And are you happy with your original family? Maybe not. Are you happy with your inspir- ins- uh, with spiritual family? Maybe also not. Maybe you cannot run away from the ter- horror that you had in the Holocaust. Maybe it mm-hmm. it hunts you and it will never leave you, and it, you will never be happy. Well, there's a question for Brian Weidman, right? Or yes, White, excuse Weidner. Brian, Brian Weidner. He's not. A, uh, yeah, but he, uh, we know he's not. He's reformed himself. But, yeah, but he but still have demons. Inside. Still, yes, yeah. right. And so, and, and being, you have to kind of be okay that that's the case. Um, I mean, you can't deny it. Um, that's why people do join those kind of cults. Uh, in this case, yeah. in his case, it was a neo-Nazi fa- uh, skinhead group. <laughs> yeah. In your grandmother's case, this cult, Harmonia. Uh, an outlet but, for happiness, mm-hmm. which she never had, yeah. and 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 There's she no. died in the in the cult. She did. You know, the, she sorry. died in the. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she died from starvation because oh that's what God. they believed in, and and it's kind of a uh, surreal because is it an ascetic? It's like an ascetic 
Buddhist, well, not Buddhist, but mo- like a they certain ascetic in, in monk fasting, fasting, uh, long way to get rid of, of demons, toxins, and, of and, toxins and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. No. Well, I'm really sorry that happened. Well, telling your story is a, maybe a, um, a good way to, um, by in letting other people know about this and getting this story to other people and other potential vulnerable people is yeah. a positive way of, of remembering her uh, or, or sharing her memory. Well, it's memory. obviously not you a know. remembrance movie. You no, know, no, I know that. that kind of like right. But it reaching it. people and saying, you know, this is these things are going it, on today. It exposes a, a, a way of how p- people always ask, how do I become... How yeah. did she become? How does an intelligent, a, yeah, how did intelligent, powerful person woman, yeah, become a cult member? And it well, is, you, you survived the Holocaust, but this is what, what, what exactly. you, you know. She survived the Holocaust. She didn't survive herself. Well, right. And then you can ask, did she survive the Holocaust? Because, right? Yeah. So many, th- this was a slow suicide in a way. And exactly. I don't mean to no, no, that's, wrap that's, your that's grandmother. The case. That's yeah, the case. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I went back to the cult, uh, facing the cult leader um, and I did my research for mm-hmm. the last four and a half years and wrote the script wow. while I was editing wow. Wow. Skin and we're yeah. going to shoot it with Orrin Movement as producer and set and scene and uh, hopefully the winter it's 37 women where are you shooting it? Uh, New York in upstate New York oh. so we have the how they met will be in New York mm-hmm. and instead of Jerusalem mm-hmm. and the cult we're going to shoot Virginia for New York I mean, New York for Virginia. Right, right. Oh, gosh. Well, Absolutely. I can't wait to talk to you about that when that comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Skin again opens June 26th in theaters, and it's uh, director's guy, Nativ. Thank you, man. Thank this you so is, much, this man. This is the best. Everything. Thanks. You're yeah, the best. This man. is terrific. You're amazing.